Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular Skeptic Council meeting for July 17th, 2017 at 7 p.m. Mr. Collier, good evening. Mayor Lowry, here. Mr. Reynolds, here. Sorry, no. Mr. Lindsay, here. Mr. Lighty, here. Mr. Rick Lowry, here. Mr. Lethley, here. Mr. Craybock, here. All present. Thank you, sir. You'll stand on tonight's invocation by Councilman John Craybock. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you to give you thanks for a wonderful country that we are free to speak our minds, to be governed. We look, Heavenly Father, towards you for wisdom and blessings on this night. Let the Holy Spirit show us peace. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Over the tonight, we fly in the back. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
$484,328.46, and the half percent lease income tax is $240,000. $383.48. And I have attached the uh, check listing and other reports. If there's any questions I can entertain. You might be asked. He's on the page I was going to. You're on the same page I am. Uh, Ms. Harris. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Harris, excuse me. I was looking at the uh, income tax collection report. Seems to be down some. Can you explain that, or has the money not come in from Cleveland yet? Or what? On the uh, second page of the report, I had our tax administrator put a little explanation together for you to read, and then um, any questions that I can't answer, I can get back with her. Um, the increase or the um, collection for CCA is down about 15 percent this time. Of year versus us, our collections from last year. Um, some of the the reasons um, they're not. She's she's looking into it. There's no exact amount that we know that people are going. You know what their income is to collect. So it's never a known number to be exact. So it's down a little bit, but we're keeping a good eye on it. Um, it could be that there might be some people that have not filed or didn't get the information, but. They are working with our tax administrator and will be um, keeping up on that every month. Have, have, have they found anybody that, uh, through their records with the federal government, that is filing federal and state and not city returns? Have I don't they, have, have that information that if they've got to that point yet. <clears throat> they haven't got to that point yet. They'll go through this portion and then they'll start doing that at a later date. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, now, some, somewhat of what, what I was going to ask, you know, but this ends in May, April 15th is the deadline for the for income tax. It's just their reporting and what they collect for our entity is through May right now. And that's that's the report that we have from them. Well, can we keep continue this and keep it up, up to date so we can well, see we, that it's, negative 15 It's as up to date as we get the information from them. We get a report every month on what they've collected, and by the time I get it, it's in. It's about a month behind on the reports that I give to you. Yeah, but negative 15 percent. If that compounds within the next few months, that's going to yeah. say ouch. And, and we're going to watch it close. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So I noticed that like 15 was a million dollars, 14, 900. So it's kind of been trending down. Would you say that with our collection since the past? Because uh, the annual collecting for 15 was 1 million, 991,000. And then 2014 was 962,000. And then 2013 was 979. And 23. So it's kind of been, and then 2016 was 870,000. So it's kind of been trending down. Now, so it, it could possibly not be them. It could just be people aren't working, it, or there isn't jobs available in exactly. the economy. So exactly. I mean, it's, not that, it. it's not that we're not collecting it. It's just that it's been trending down, which is part of the, math, the national average of incomes are low and stagnant. So it affects everything across the board from tax collection. Well, uh, else. Could also be in you know here got 1099s instead of 1040s too. But that's also something. Mm -hmm. A lot of this, we have a lot of service workers out there. Well, not service workers. Just, uh, well, that's kind of retired. Retired. No, no. It's not it's not retired. retired. But if you get, if, if you subcontract to somebody and you issue them a 1099, oh. that money is taxable to the city. 1099 right. retirement, which is a 1099 right. IRA, is not. That's right. 1099 M is. That's what I was talking about. 1099. Okay. Well, you just said a 1099 right. Mr. Ruffley, you know, one of the other things I might point out, you've got, you've got extensions until October, so you know, that could be part of it. We don't have extensions. 
Federal. 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 <laughs> the, uh, you could also have an aging, we could have an aging population, That's so we have fewer people that are paying tax versus what we were in the past. But one of the questions I had was, uh, is a cost relationship to collecting what, what this company is collecting versus the cost of us collecting it ourselves when so we had the employee that was doing it. Do we have any numbers on that yet? I can get the exact. Um, they're supposed to come in at about 38 to 40,000 total for the year, and okay. they take a percentage of what they collect, mm -hmm. and that's based upon what we were estimating last year, and an average salary employee was with benefits was in the 80,000, mm -hmm. so okay. I think we're going to be a lot lower than the 40. Okay. It'd, be nice, it'd be nice to see that number okay. for the two as well. When we get the whole thing done, so you can really show what the cause and effect of this whole program was. Maybe we're going to pull in 10 percent less and save 40 percent on the labor costs. On the labor, okay, thank so you. You know, mm -hmm. let's look at the whole package. Absolutely. Ms. Harris also they already touched on about the cross reference with the federal database. I know you guys can't give out specific information on you know the individual and the exact amounts of things, but when that does come into play, can you guys give us some just general information whether they're they're catching people that aren't paying what they should be and things of that nature? Is sure. that something you can do when, when they get to that point? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Can I add to that? Just keep in mind how speedy the IRS is to uh, give out the information. So yeah, we're we're looking at three to four years in arrears to do examinations. So who knows when we're going to get that information? But I think that we need to produce reports that are as detailed as we yes. can be. So for this year, next year, yeah. the administration and council can see, all right, is this worth us being in this? Right. And how do we see going forward? Right. So awesome tips. Good. Mr. Reynolds. Just one follow-up, Ms. Harris. Sure. Uh, I see that uh, we have purchased our new police cruiser paid for $27,485. It's uh, the check register. It is the check number 73306 on June 9th. So I have my next question. We now both of our cruises are completely paid off. The first new ones are completely paid off. The, 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 the first one we had a um, five year loan on it. This one is paid in full. Could we possibly pay off that old one too? I mean, what well, better way to make good credit than paying off on time? Eliminate some city debt. Just look into it. Sometimes you actually. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Leffley. He's paying my loser a little bit. Uh, I'd be okay. I'd be okay with that. <laughs> I just don't like big debt. No. So, and I know, I, I know, like we're trying to build our credit back up because we have gotten downgraded uh, a few years back. I think we've been upgraded once, maybe. So I know we're trying to build that, but I think the less debt, the better debt. So. Sure. You definitely look into it, Mr. Lindsay. Uh, to follow up on the uh, police cruisers, I thought we had some discussion a couple of months or so ago when we was talking about buying this new cruiser and paying, basically paying cash for it, paying it off. I thought there was some discussion on going ahead and paying off the other one. Also, we have the money, that way we don't have that payment and we can start saving that money. Uh, do you remember that conversation? I thought maybe you No, there was, there was. I think it was, I think, no, it was during a work session, I do believe, when we were talking about some of this stuff. I don't think there was a fine conclusion to it. Um, I'll look over the paperwork and see what we can do, and then we'll analyze the fund levels in each budget, and then we'll bring it back to council and let council re-decide, and maybe this time it can be done by a motion of it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, if, if I may, uh, yes, sir. I have a couple more questions here. The, uh, uh, Ms. Mrs. Harris, on uh, check number 73267, I've seen that we bought some pool supplies at Howard's for $7.46. Could you explain what pool supplies that only cost seven forty six? I'm just curious. Or was it like concessions or something? <laughs> Actually, for pool supplies, they probably ran out of. Um, I can tell you exactly what it is if you want. It's two cans of icing. <laughs> icing. Icing for sweet pretzels. <laughs> Uh, well, the, 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 the gas leak at the pool? Gas pool. 
7? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, we first fired up the pool. Um, Vectric come out to do a leak down test because now anytime electric used to be more than 30 days, you have to have it re-inspected by your county. Well, now they do that with gas. Anytime it's over 30 days, you have to inspect. So Vectric came out. That didn't pass, so I had to get some repairs done before um, by a &L. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bridge. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, moving on with the city manager, and thank you, Ms. Uh, Ms. Harris. Moving on with the city manager's report, our service discussion with Mr. Howard Chico. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, Council, members of the public. Under service departments, in your report that passed out uh, at the beginning of the meeting, the street department will be out on the streets here soon, trimming up overgrown trees that are encroaching the street uh, height requirements, i.e. pretty much the old section of town will be going through and getting the minimum of 13 feet. Uh, I noticed that a lot more trash trucks are starting to hit those trees and uh, a lot of ve regular vehicles can't park up against the curb and a lot of those trees come to curb lawn. So um, I will be putting out a letter. Some people do get upset that we're trimming on their tree even though it encroaches the right of way, but we still like to be courteous about that. <laughs> taking place here within the next couple weeks on the bike path and that's basically to clear all the overgrowth uh, up to about 20 feet down on each side of the bike path. Uh, water department will be placing, this has been on it before, we, uh, four fire hydrants. We may be taking that up to five. Uh, we found another one that uh, is, is bad that we just encountered during our tank inspection. Uh, hydro flushing schedule, again, that'll be released once we have the uh, tank back online. Various street projects, uh, that has been on the report, but I do have an update, letters, uh, I delivered letters to inform the residents affected, and I got an update this morning, uh, about two weeks from now, the, uh, the, the contractor should be starting to perform some of the city's portion of the contract, which is all those streets and what a dog. This schedule is very flexible to weather, um, it is one contractor going all throughout Clark County. Uh, I think he's up in Harmony Township right now, so they're all over the place. Uh, Prentice Drive Phase 3, 4 re reconstruction projects currently out for bid. Bid opening is July 20th, um, 2017. Letter notifying the residents of the project will go out once that I get the construction, construction schedule uh, down. Last item is the Scarf Road Water Tower. Um, we had scheduled since our last um, council meeting the tank inspection was completed Friday, this past Friday, July 14th. TIC, which is Tank Industry Consultants, is now in the process of completing the report documenting their inspections. Uh, we are currently working on getting Scarf Tower placed back online as we speak. Um, with this inspection, just in the very beginning, nothing on your report, but we have learned quite a bit about that tower that we did not know and was not in any kind of design plans when it was built. Uh, when it was built. So we did get to see a little bit inside, but um, hopefully we'll have it back online and the report will be, I'm guessing, two to three weeks, maybe longer by the time they organize all the pictures and get it all wrote, um, um, typed up. Because they measure chain link fence outside, pipe the chain link, how big is our prop? They, they, they go into uh, great detail um, for this report. And that is currently all I have. I can entertain any questions on this report or anything else within our service departments. I seen a video posted on uh, Facebook with this nasty water being banked out of that tower. It was on Facebook. Nope. Nope. It was on Facebook. I texted to you. Did you tell? Okay. Well, I, okay. It's one of the rumors together, you know. <laughs> so I stand corrected. It was a text. Anyways, I drove over to take a look because I wanted to see how nasty it was. It really was bad in the video. And they had a chunk of black stuff. And I asked the people, the guys there, uh, what is this stuff? And they said it was like a charcoal. Hmm. I'm unaware of the black piece. It, like it was about the size of a five gallon bucket, the diameter about this high over by the fence. Were they putting water through it? Because charcoal. No, it was filled. just, they, I don't know where it came from. It was just oh, laying. Okay, they uh, said I, doubt, out of the tank. I doubt that it came from inside the tank. Well, they told me it did. Oh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, it could be across, there is a cathodic protection equipment that's in there that, that keeps um, any kind of electrolysis happening to the structure. Mm -hmm. um, that will be coming out, but I'm guessing a lot of that destroyed inside and almost all of it fell to the bottom plus some rigging components fell to the bottom so it's very um, possible that it's part of that old cathodic protection system that was in there because um, everything now is done by paints paints do that but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's probably what that's from okay. they, uh, I, I, they told me that the tank was really in pretty good shape for not having nothing done for it for 30 years 
So I asked the guy, I said, so we can wait another 30 years to do something? And he goes, well, I guess, you know, the city wanted to. I didn't tell him who I was. He just thought I was somebody who just walked up, was nosy. And I thought, well, maybe we'll wait 15 years to do something. <laughs> no. So when we have to go on a, a massive citywide boiling, we can say thanks, Councilman Lindsay. Yeah. Yeah. For the month of June, the New Kalaw Fire Division responded to 72 EMS calls in the city and 11 EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to six fire-related calls in the city and seven related fire calls in Elizabeth Township. They also responded in the city to three or four service calls or good intent calls. We had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid, either by Pike Township or Bethel Park due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered three mutual aid calls to Pike Township and one EMS call to Bethel Park. Medic 52A responded to one EMS, EMS call. In the month of June, the division responded to four overdoses. All the hose, ladder, and pump testings were completed in June without any uh, major problems. Assistant Chief Geiselman, EMS Chief, uh, taught two CPR classes for a total of six people. And that's basically the report. Any other questions or comments? Council, Mr. Reynolds? I just want to thank you again, Chief Trustee, for allowing uh, the public and myself and Mr. Luckley to come out to the uh, uh, car cut. That was an exciting time. It was, I really enjoyed uh, installing the way at the windshield. <laughs> It's a roller coaster goes up and down. And I have somebody asked me how many chiefs we have, and I told them I thought we only had three, and I named them. And they said, and they gave me the name, and I cannot remember the name of another chief. Do we have another chief? That we have a assistant chief of special operations. And that's Anthony Cooper. He yes, handles him. He handles all special operations such as computers, radios. Um, grant work, that type of thing, and he handles all that because it's, that's a lot of time that he's putting into that on his own, uh, and it erased that type of position. Okay, because when they asked and they said, is Chief Ritter gone? I go, I haven't heard, but no. I don't know. The department, so at one, the, the, the department originally at one time had three, well, actually they had a deputy chief, fire chief, deputy chief, and two assistant chiefs. And at this time, we put that third chief back in for that reason because a lot of the things that we're dealing with right now needs that attention. So we, have, we have three chiefs or four chiefs? Counting myself, we have four. Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. Craybar, have you received the Mark's radios yet? We already have the Mark's radios in, in possession, and um, we're working towards getting those taken care of and put done. in service. It's, it's a, a process. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Is everything okay outside? Yeah, just medical. Normally, that's well. Thank you. 
Ready to go? Yes, sir. <laughs> and moving on with the manager report, thank you, uh, Chief Trusty. Um, Sergeant Underwood, I do believe, is on vacation. So we have our very own contracted deputy crews here uh, in his place. Um, I would say, Council, if you have any questions on that report, please email them to me and I can get them to Sergeant Underwood. Um, deputy Cruz, I won't put you on the spot for me to read if that's okay. All right. Uh, any questions on that, um, let, let me know. You can ask me right now. I can write them down. Real quick. Sure. What's the difference in blue and red dot? Yeah. Since we don't have a color. We don't have a color. Blue is 2016, red is 2017. Thank you. Legends are blue. crucial on maps. Blue is 2016, red is 2017. Mr. Reynolds has a question. Mr. Birch. Or... One second. Yeah, Ready to go. Yeah, it's not a question on the report per se. It's a question about an incident that happened this weekend with the resident who are not really a resident, just a lawyer, Paul. I guess he had ran down Main Street and the Depends and being a Temple Citizens call the 911 dispatch to say, hey,
city. Um, him running up and down Main Street uh, in a diaper at the farmer's market or whatever he had on. And because if that's on Facebook, other communities are going to see that. And I don't think we want to have that, that type of activity in there. There's something we, we have to be able to do something to, to stop this. And I'll yield to Mr. Lowry. No, there was someone after you, I think. Mr. Mr. Reynolds. This is in regards to that. I mean, thought I was going that route. Uh, my question is, could we possibly get like the reports that have been taken on him? I'm sure it's a, dumb, a, a large number. I mean, the council and anyone in the public is very able to call the sheriff's office and ask for a recovery of that report. Well, I didn't know if you knew the number off the top of your head. I think council, my advice, this is a very sticky situation. You have a guy on the publicly funded ground. Nobody likes to see a man grow thrown down the street in diapers. I didn't want to see it, but the problem is it's no different than having a pair of shorts on running down. Nothing's exposed. The sheriff's office is not going to put themselves in liability for arresting somebody. We're not going to do anything but ourselves in liability. Uh, if you're asking for legislation or ordinances to prevent homeless people in your town, that would be a discussion that's a policy thing that one council member would have to talk to our attorney about. Um, but I think it would be very hard to enforce. I think that there are other homeless people in town that you just don't see. Um, I think call situation is a little bit different. If I, if I might jump in here. Go right ahead. I think, and what is the name of the town? Cruz. 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 Deputy Cruz. Yes, uh, perhaps you can uh, help fill in here. But I think perhaps the situation, uh, and I have a very hard time hearing in this room, so I'm not sure I heard everything perfectly, but I think I generally am aware of the situation. I'm more than generally aware of the situation at hand. Uh, but um, I believe what we're talking about, and for purposes of the public, and just giving some education, and perhaps you can fill in here where I leave off. Uh, but if the public sees something, uh, with regard to anyone that they're not comfortable with, or if they think an individual is in jeopardy for themselves or for others, if someone is walking out in the middle of the road for no apparent reason and traffic is oncoming, and, or if someone is not appropriately dressed and there's no explanation for it, these would be appropriate occasions to dial 911 to reach out for help for that person and for the public because that would be behavior that's rather inexplicable, especially for an adult. And, um, and then you'll get an immediate response. And in those occasions, the law enforcement will arrive and will figure out what is best to do because the law enforcement has the ability to take that person uh, calmly uh, or uh, against their will, if necessary, uh, to the local hospital and to have them evaluated. And if uh, medical personnel determines necessary, they can be held for 72 hours and they can be given appropriate uh, medical treatment and help. But they're not taking them. The 72 hours is not true, true like everyone thinks it is. That's up to the um, doctor on call whether or not. If I pink someone, pink slip someone, because I think they need to be seen, Say that to me again. People think that when we pink slip from someone, there's guarantee they're in there for 72 hours. It's not. That's up to whether or not the doctor who's on call who wants to see him. I pink slip someone, and I've seen him out within an hour of that time already. So it's up to the doctor whether or not they want to keep him or not. He, we, we can take him, and he can be out 30 minutes later, and he'll be walking back to New Pearl Island. Or they could accept him. It's really all uh, it's up to Springfield Regional, so there's no guarantee to be a 72 hour. And everyone in Springfield knows Paul Johnson, unfortunately, too. Okay. Um, there's a statute that allows allows for individuals to receive help through law enforcement that states as I've Thank you. And I've seen it used regularly. But Mr. Bridge, do you have anything else? So if council wanted to have any policy to prohibit homeless people, I think that would be something definitely one council member would have to get with our attorney about, because that will be one that will be plagued with controversy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'm not even sure if it's even possible since it's publicly funded ground. However, I do know that these cities that are high, high in tourist destinations and that have nice weather year round, mm -hmm. they have legislation in place to do so. Um, so I don't know what that would entail with Ohio state law versus our own charter. And then, but that is not my realm or expertise to kind of begin to even make anything. Like but since it would be a policy decision, that would have to come with, from one of the council members. Mr. Lighty. Well, maybe instead of trying to I would, keep. I just, I, I mean, for the safety, help. Lynette, can you, can you hold on just a minute, please? I'm so sorry. Hold on. Uh, maybe instead of an ordinance trying to keep homeless people out, maybe whenever we have like a public event, we have an ordinance that says you must wear pants and shirts. Maybe it'll be something a little more uh, tolerable and feasible for the people in the city. Because I know for me, I mean, if I was there and I heard all about getting text messages saying, hey, don't take your boys up here because this is going on. Um, man, that's a bad look. That is a really, really bad look. And you're right. If we say there's nothing we can do, that's not a good enough answer either. So would it be out of line to put something up that says, you know, during a public event, during a festival, during um, farmer's market, we have a pants and shirt policy in place. And that would be tough to do, and I, I understand what you're going, but it would have to be fine lined out, because when you have ladies who wear skirts, so that would have to be addressed, but then, I'm not trying to be funny, but you do have guys that wear a skirt, especially if it's around the cook festival time, so there's a lot of things that would have to be really ironed out with that. Um, but it almost seems like these individual events, whether it be heritage or flight, should have policies, and I think it's, it's a combination of work between the actual event person doing the event and also us because it's on our city street. So I think that uh, moving forward, um, we're all gonna sit down as a community and find out how we wanna address this problem fairly. Um, Mr. Paul really hasn't caused any problems. Now let me hold on before I say that. Let me go further, further. I deal with phone calls about Mr. Johnson all the time. And I'll be honest with you, some of the stuff is people are just, there are very warrantable situations where Paul has stepped over his boundaries. I'm not, I'm not naming names. There has been issues where Paul has went above and kind of overstepped the boundaries. But there's also been a lot of interest in, 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 in accounts where Paul did nothing wrong and citizens starting attacking Paul. So, you, we have a very unique situation here, you know? And what I've seen is I see a community, I, I, I honestly, I'll speak honestly, I see it divided. I see half of it saying, let's help. Then I see the other half saying, get him out of here. It's a tough situation to be in when you're behind this chair or that desk to figure out what is the best when this guy is causing problems for some, but joy for others. So we as a community need to come together and find out how we want to, be, not even Mr. Johnson, but moving forward, you know? From my understanding, Mr. Johnson is from New Carlisle. He went to Tecumseh High School. I think that's where you see a lot of that support coming in, you know? And Paul is not your average looking homeless guy at all. I, when I, he was pointed out to me at school, I'd be like, that's him, really? You know, so it, it is, we're in a unique situation with Mr. Johnson, we truly are. But I think it's up to council and citizens to say how you guys want to handle it moving forward, communicate that with our attorney, and that's how we get things done. But until then, nothing's on the books, no legislation. We have to follow our code, state code, and quite frankly, ethical code. That's all I have to say. Sean? Yeah. I think it's tough, but I think it's kind of sad that we're sitting here wanting to put ordinances against a man who is mentally challenged. And you make a statement like if he shows up at my house, it's the last off he makes, Mr. Lindsay. I'm going to send him to the undertaker. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. The man is mentally challenged. We shouldn't be trying to pass an ordinance to get him out of town. We should be looking for some help. I've read stuff on Facebook. I saw people taunting him and getting him riled up. I spoke to him. He spoke very fine to me. Could I tell there was something wrong with him? Absolutely. 
but the man is mentally challenged. If I get in trouble for that, I'm sorry because I know I'm not a psychiatrist, but it doesn't take a whole lot to watch him and see what's been going on. But the man needs help. I don't think anyone here can do it. I think it's going to take a doctor, some institution to get him in there. I've heard they take it, as she said, they take him to hospitals and kick him right back. That's our system, and it's screwed up somewhere, and it needs to get fixed. And I think we need to do something about it instead of trying to hurt the man. I'm sorry, I apologize to you, but I think that was a horrible mistake. A horrible statement to make about the man. And I think we need to get together and see what we can look at and call and contact every agency we can and find some help for him. Not to kick him off the street or try to shoot him or put him away or, you know, that's, that's totally ridiculous. You gotta look out for your company. Is Mr. Johnson a veteran of the U.S.? He is not. I, I, someone I told talked to his was. sister no. and she said he is not. So now, he never that's all I know because that was my first thing. I was gonna go to some contacts I had and try to get him some help. If he's not a veteran, those were not good. Lowell made that contact with him personally and he said he was not. And his sister says he's not. So I just wanted to clarify because that's an avenue of help. That's funny. That's very right. right. And that's, that's not available since he's not a veteran. That was Lowell's thought. So he has not here. Not anybody that is not a veteran. But there's got to be something out there. I don't have the knowledge to find out who they are. You know, I don't know. Sure. But somebody needs to look into this. But to sit here and talk about past an ordinance against a homeless man, he's not only a homeless man, he's mentally challenged. My God. Thank you, Mr. Ryder. Mr. Lighting. Um, I actually did go to high school with Paul, and he was an outstanding person. I, uh, he started playing football, I think, just his uh, senior year, and uh, he was great. Even after he graduated, he'd come back and help us lift, and he was two years older than I was. Mm -hmm. And he was, uh, I always kind of viewed him as, as a leader. And when I realized it was him that was making all this ruckus, it was it was heartbreaking. And uh, according to his sister, no, he, Paul's not a veteran. Um, but he is somebody in our community, and his sister did say that, you know, he can turn down any help, and he turned down every single help he can get. So I'm more worried about, are we gonna be able to protect him from himself? So if we were to call dispatch and write a report, if it starts piling up, does that mean anything? It depends on what is being said in those reports. Mm -hmm. But then you have to watch out too, because then if someone wants to, they can say we're harassing him. <laughs> Well, I was driving up the street uh, one day. It was by the dollar store, and people were just heckling him to no end. Right. And of course, he just starts screaming at them. And it was one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my life. That you know, someone that I used to know pretty well, and this is what it is. And it's just uh, it's gut wrenching to watch. And you know, I think it's just a matter of time before something happens. And it's, he's not a bad person, but he, I mean, he's, he's sick. So, man, it would be nice if we could think of something that, to stop this from happening. I don't care if it's the kids running around across country. I've heard some of the cross country kids say stories that he chases them. Um, you know, maybe it's just playful, but if you're a teenage girl, you know, you may not see it like that. Um, or if you're, you know, just a, a punk guy or girl and you start yelling at somebody on the side of the street and he attacks you, you know, whose fault is that really? But he's not able to tell the difference, you know, between that. So, you know, not just here on council, but maybe, you know, as a community, we should try to come up with something to help him out. Let's everybody start making phone calls to see if we can come up with something. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, this individual may be uh, uh, may have served in the armed services. He is not. No. He is not. Oh, I thought he was not. No, I just said he was not. He did not. Pardon me? I just said he did not. Oh, he's not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that we could oh, go okay. down that route. All right. Well, I, I agree. I agree with the, I agree with the response. Some people say they don't need help, but clearly this individual is in need of help. And, and an ordinance, in, in my legal opinion, an ordinance is not going to solve this community problem. No. It's, it's not. Mr. Mayor, I'm going to call Mr. Craybocker. This isn't the only person this has happened to, you know. 
you know, there's one person that, that just passed away last week, Gary McConaughey, you know, and it's happened to him. But, you know, and to me, he was very kind-hearted. I have to say, when I first met him, I was probably wanting to stay away from him. But I sat down, we talked many times, and he started coming to the community dinners. And now they're starting to go through his, his thing. And what's amazing about him, he was one of the first people with a compassion child. And he supported that child, you know. Then when that one was grown, 18, I think it is, he got another child, you know. And he had such a kind heart. But I've seen people heckle him, tell me all kinds of stories that turn out not to be true. You know, so people, like I've said before, you sometimes do not know. You just don't know. Now, I don't know. I don't know Paul. I didn't know about Paul until I think you told him about him earlier today. And I didn't know. I didn't know who he was. You know, I did see somebody at the dollar store one time. And I didn't. You know, he just looked like a homeless guy to me, just passing through. So I never knew. But again, like your like everybody said, he does need. He sounds like he needs help. It sounds like needs help. There's like the lady at Lee's Chicken that one time. You know, she needs to get back on her meds. You know, how you do that? I don't know. I don't know. Thank you, sir. Council, anyone else? All right. All right. Thank you, Deputy Cruz. And moving on with the city manager report uh, under informational items. Um, Council work session needed to discuss adding online water payments and also uh, parks and rec policy. Um, I did not have it on this manager report for the parks and rec policy. It was on the last one. I, I, I do apologize. But we do need a work session need for uh, online water payments and parks and rec policy. Um, but there is at the end there a motion to approve a vacation for me. So I just ask that that work session not be scheduled. Um, the week uh, during, your vacation. during my vacation, <laughs> unless council intends to when not to approve my vacation. <laughs> but in hindsight, which is always 2020, I should have to split and have the uh, approval first. So however council wants to handle that, if you want to break the rules of council, maybe vote on my uh, vacation, that would be perfect. And then we can worry about setting that old uh, work session. Well, we actually have three weeks before the next meeting, so. Which is why I'm going on vacation. Yes, but you're going to be on the schedule. What, what, and I'm going to be on the 18th. It's one of the few weeks, Mr. Mayor, we don't have a council every other week. Right. So it's ideal for me to go that week so I'm not rushed back to get ready for a council. And I'm going to be gone the 18th through 27th. Of August? No, July. July? So 18th through 27th? Yeah. I would suggest August 1 to, to August 6, somewhere in that time period. Well, may, can I make a recommendation? Sure. sure. Shall we meet the list? This is uh, according to availability for schedules. Maybe we meet at 6 o'clock on Monday, the day of the council meeting, and just have that and then go right into our regular council meeting. Would that be enough time? That's a set time. I don't know if that would be enough. That's a lot to go over. Well, I'd say the water thing will probably be pretty straightforward for the most part. Well, there'll be some, yeah. Well, yeah, I think you're right. Let's do a separate <laughs> story. We might go into some discussion. Okay, so the first week of August is what we were looking at. Uh, Tuesday the 1st is National Night Out. Um, August 31st, we have the end of the governmental meeting here. Um, so other than that, I think you guys are pretty clear. So our prime watch is the Wednesday, August 9th at 6.30. Excuse me. Third then? So you the, third, have the third is a Thursday. Yeah. You have a Wednesday, too. Mr. Reynolds, what's your schedule coming from Columbus Light? So I know I have the second. Oh, no. I pretty much open except for the second and the first and the eighth. So you could the third be easy for you to get down from Columbus oh, yeah. time? Oh, yeah. Can everyone cool. do the third? That's a Thursday night. Yes. Third one for you. It doesn't, but I'll make it work. <laughs> <laughs> what time? That is Thursday. 
We can go into the week after that too. I mean, we're not going to make any no, heat wave. Is that maybe that's good? After. Are you sure? Do you want to yeah. do it Wednesday the ninth then, Mr. Lowry? That's crime watch. No, Thursday's good. I just play cards on Thursday. It's no big deal. Okay. No, crime watch is the following. Wednesday. I got Wednesday, August ninth. Okay. Uh, we're talking yes. so the third. <laughs> so we're going to third. Yeah, that's okay. so what time is everybody? Thursday's good. Six. Do you say? What time did you say? No, it's up to you guys. Six thirty. Six thirty. Well, what time do you play cards? Don't make any difference. Don't worry about this. Can you get 6.30? 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30
we invite the council in and also key administrators to get our headshots done. And we're very looking forward to that upgraded website. Um, so as soon as we get more information on that website, we'll definitely share it with you, especially the day where it's going to be up, going, and live. Um, but it's been a long time coming for that website, and we are very excited to get it done. Um, city's bond refinancing summary. Um, council, you do have that now. Uh, please take a look at it. I did give council tonight one of these. The city, uh, we did refinance two of our bonds that we had out. One was the 2006 Twin Creeks infrastructure improvement, um, and the other one was just the 2010 various purpose. Um, those interest rates were about, for the Twin Creeks, I think 6.125%, and then for the uh, 2010 various purpose. Um, I think we had three different term series of 2020 and 2030, and I think a 2040, but don't quote me on that. And those interest rates varied from, I want to say, about 4.5% up to a 5.5%. Good news, after we refinanced, uh, we had got the Twin Creeks down from 6.125 to an even 3%. And then also our 2010 uh, various purpose bonds, we got down to an even, I want to say, 3.125%. Uh, that equates to about $116,000 in savings over the course of repayment. Um, so I did give council a 51-page uh, um, summary of what's going on. Um, the summary is not from me. It's from the Ross Sinclair and Associates. However, you do have some Excel sheets in there. Um, anytime you go through these massive financial documents, oh, it's always nice just to make it easy for council to kind of follow along with these with the new payment schedule. So uh, Ms. Harris and myself worked hard to get these bonds refinanced, uh, but we did, again, see a savings of about $116,000 over the course of repayment, which for a city of our size and on our means is very, very good. So um, we're very excited to share that with council. Uh, new playground equipment. Um, I had a meeting with the owner of Playworld, and Playworld is a company that makes, well, they made that playground equipment right out there. Um, I was at a conference and I had an opportunity to actually handshake with the Playworld owner directly, and I did that. And through that communication, I actually got a meeting that we had right here, sitting at that table right there. We're going to move forward um, with council's approval with the 2018 budget um, to get a little bit of extra money in there for our parks and rec um, and to get some more inclusive playground equipment. And what I mean by inclusive playground equipment is um, kids in handicapped wheelchairs. You can have a playground that's ADA accessible, meaning that there's enough difference between like distance between a slide and a swing for that wheelchair to go through, but that doesn't mean there's anything for that kid in the wheelchair to actually do at the playground. So um, right now, what I would like to see is a few pieces that are inclusive and interactive. You know, maybe like a little thing that goes like this, and it has three normal seats for an able-bodied person, but it has that fourth seat that somebody can come out of a wheelchair and be strapped in, and they can play with the other kids and just feel normal for the day. Um, the theory behind that is, is through association, these kids will grow up and be a lot more comfortable if someone's in a wheelchair versus I am now 18 in the workforce and I have a guy in a wheelchair and now I'm uncomfortable because I don't know how to talk to him, you know? Um, so that is my goal with that. Um, we'll definitely have some more information to come. I do want to get our Parks and Rec Board that was uh, recently uh, approved in on the decision making when it comes to that. But I think we have an opportunity through me meeting the owner of Play World and then discounting some of the equipment that we're going to be looking at. And also through grants, we have a good chance to improve our parks even better uh, in 2018. So as soon as I get more information that, we'll definitely pass it along. Uh, we're in the very early stages with it right now, but I'm very excited to get it going. Um, in the short term, um, council did graciously approve us uh, to add uh, some resources, estimated resource, I mean some money to our uh, parks and rec for this year. And talking to some people, we got this new playground equipment up here, which is very well received, but we don't have any baby swings. Like if you want to take your infant and put them on an old school swings and swing, we don't have anything, you know? So I did go to council, ask for a little bit more money, um, and we did get it. Um, so I will be ordering a bay extension or a standalone at each one of our major parks, and that's Smith Park, Willowick Park, New Carl Park, the one behind Dollar General, New Carl Park, and that one too. So um, again, it might be a bay extension where you have a normal swing set and then just gets added on to the end. Um, but then we might have a case like out here where it's going to be a standalone unit because we want it relatively close to the new playground equipment we have. And the problem, the other, it's just too far away. You're not going to want to have to go walk so far to swing your, in, your infant and then come all the way back here to play with your maybe toddler. So um, it's, 
we, 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 I would love for our parks to get better. We have a great um, park system. Um, it was lacking some more up-to-date um, equipment, which we started that last year. We're just going to add on to it for 18 for this year and hopefully in 19. So again, good news with the parks, but we're very excited to get that stuff going. Um, I do believe the manager vacation has always been approved. Yes. All right. Today ended the public comment section for the turn signal project. Oh. So we do have the results back from the public comment section. And before I get going and, and, and give my two cents of how the city is going to handle this moving forward, it was a learning experience. You know, I think that such a big change to people downtown is maybe I understand why people the way it got maybe talked about the way it did. Um, we had 28 comments received. 28. That's all. 26 of those comments approve the signals. They support the signals. But they do not support taking out the parking spaces. One feedback we got was for signals and the turn lights. And then one was not for signals or the turn lights. So as a city manager, I will go on record and say we'll go forward with the signals. We will not add any turn lanes. So all the parking spaces minus the ones that will, might have to be removed for any kind of engineering, we're not taking them out. Um, that was our intention the entire time. But again, since it was used with federal funds, we had to look at alternatives. Um, but I would never recommend to council to take away 30 spots from a downtown parking spot in such a small town. But we did have to respect the uh, processes and requirements of funds that are issued from the federal government for transportation. And that's simply what we were doing. Uh, but we will not, again, for the record, we will not be adding any turn lines. We will be getting the new signal. That's all I have for the manager report. How do you feel? It was a lot, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, I feel good. I'm glad that portion's over. Mm -hmm. I truly am. Council, do you anyone have any comments on that last subject? Or the last subject. Care, Not the last subject, but... Uh, any of it? Well, I'll say something I said at TCC, and it was uh, the whole thing was about communication. You know, communication really stunk to the, to the business owner. So that's my whole point. I politely disagree. I, I, I you know, I, I we think got to not give yet both options. We gave one option, and that got blown up. But yeah. here's, here's my kind opinion on that. Um, I've talked to business owners one by one, and then I immediately turn around and see the business owner spinning on Facebook. Um, Hindsight's always 2020. I know I said that twice. There's always ways to improve. Um, but I guess it's just a matter of interpretation at this point. Um, when the stuff was, the business owners were the first to be notified. Um, well, but I think, it, it, like, like I said, you always learn You always learn from moving forward. You always learn from moving forward. There's a building on that building. Okay, so you always learn from moving over, but part of the requirement is just for, for us to notify the owner of the building. So if you don't own it in your building, it's no different than we do code enforcement. We notify oh, that. Um, it was, I think it was all spelled out pretty easily, but I just think it was a matter of interpretation. When, to me, when you see the word proposed, to me, that I work in this for a living, I know what that means. To the, someone who doesn't work in it, I can see where it came from. That's why I said there's always ways to learn. But I can relate that to when we changed the zoning on Madison Street School when I was a planning director. You know, people just jumped to conclusions. They said R2 was low income housing when it really was the total opposite. Mm -hmm. There's always ways to improve. Um, but I, I think social media was the devil in this particular case. Um, and I'm not going to offer any kind of explanation or excuse as to when people go to social media and they maybe spin it or overplay it or downplay it for that matter. But we all have seen social media take over these topics and it just runs wild and rampant. Sure, sure. At any point in time, anyone could call the city and say, what is going on? And that's- They could have called one of us. It, absolutely, absolutely. But like I said, moving forward, there's always ways to improve. Um, okay, I just want to say that. I want to thank your crew, uh, you know, for putting um, out there, you know, in, uh, the entrance of New Carlisle, Park, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 
Oh, Smith the Park. oh, Smith Park sign, yeah. Smith bad. The sign it was bad. It was bad. It was bad, and, and they did a decent job. So. They did a good job. Yeah. It was a good job. Well, well <clears throat> that's it. I had one for you, Mr. Kicker, that I forgot to mention or ask for both of you. Can we put a little time and money into the, some of these fans in here? I think that we still got some questions and answers about the floor and all that other stuff that right. council needs to get to the bottom of. So I think that maybe we should have put that into uh, maybe talk about that here soon. Okay. If we're not going to go to Bell Manor. I think we need to resort on making the shelter house a little acoustically better. Now, I'm not pointing fingers at me. I'm just saying. No, no. As I'm much not. As, I think as much as this shelter house gets rented out, I mean, it gets rented out a lot. I think it could use a little touching up. No, I agree with you, but I think it was just put on hold because the Belmont. Right. We right. didn't know what was going on with Belmont. So maybe could we discuss that in a future sure. council meeting? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Council, any other questions or comments? All righty. Let's move on.
basically what we're trying to do is allow people to enjoy their property. And if somebody wanted to do a front porch extension um, and they're already within their 25 feet because of how the house was built, um, we're allowing them to do that by saying you can project 10 feet into your front yard. Otherwise, what was happening is the moment someone would put in an, a, an application or a permit to add on to their front porch, they would immediately by default have to go into the Board of Zoning Appeals because they were already at their 25 feet. And that also cost them $125 to do so. So I was actually having a conversation with Mr. Reynolds one day about how this frustrates me. And he had suggested that he introduce some legislation to fix that, and that's where we're here today. So we're basically just allowing these people to enjoy their rights. As long as there's no safety or sanitation issues going on, why should they not be allowed to enjoy their right and do some sort of a front porch on their house to make their home better without automatically saying, yeah, you can do it, but you got to go in front of BZA just for them to say yes. And you got to pay us on the It just didn't seem right. Mr. Reynolds, have a moment. Uh, Mr. Rich Covered, I was talking with uh, some folks in town, people I know about porches, and we have had this great conversation about what the right of way is, and you need to pay this fee or tax to pretty much always get approved, which I thought was kind of ridiculous. And he agreed. It was a great conversation. I was like, well, let's put something forward to uh, eliminate this so that we can get so everybody who wants to add a porch on doesn't have to start paying this $125 fee. Uh, and I'm excited to see it because, you know, who doesn't like sitting out and sitting on the porch on a swing or reading a book outside or anything like that? I mean, I, I, most people do on your iPad nowadays, whatever you prefer. So I would ask all of you to support this piece of legislation. Council, any comments? Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. When you're ready, Mr. Porter. Mr. Kraybacher? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Definitely yes. <clears throat> Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes. Mr. Lethley? Yes, sir. Passes 7 0. Thank you, sir. Moving on when you're ready. Ordinance 17-24, introduction tonight, public hearing, and action on August the 7th, 2017, an ordinance establishing compensation rates for the city manager. Sure. Other business, Congressman Warren Davison will hold mobile office hours at the city, at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. Intergovernmental meeting will be held Monday, July 31st here at Smith Park Shelter House, and that begins at 6.30 p.m., and that is open to the public. <clears throat> National Night Out will be held on Tuesday, August 1st at the New Carlisle Church of the Brethren, and that's from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And the next Crime Watch meeting will be Wednesday, uh, August the 9th here at Smith Park Shelter House, and that starts at 6.30 p.m. Mr. Collier, Council, any other questions, comments, concerns? Sir. Sure. 